All right, welcome back to another edition of the Call Up Podcast. I'm your host, Kenny, as always, where we take your favorite superstar and take them outside of the ring, get to know them a little bit more. I am pleased to be joined by uh, Jonathan Davenport. If you do not know who this guy is, uh, you have seen his designs all over WWE. But today we are talking about a special project that he has um, going on today called Our Heroes Rocks. Jonathan, what's going on? Hey, Kenny, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah, so are you, man. But um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about um, the project that you have going on right now. It's called Our Heroes Rocks. Um, you're diving into more of the African-American culture, you know, giving us uh, names that we maybe some people are not too familiarized about. So can you just, you know, talk to us about exactly like what this project is and like what is it does it entail? Absolutely, man. Um, first of all, again, thank you for letting me talk about this and uh, stop me if I go on too long because I get no. real geeky about it, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Excited. Trust me. G- keep going, man, because the more we know, the better, you know, the better understanding we'll have of it. I know, you know, I got to, um, you know, dive into more of it. And then the little bit I've, I got to see, that's why I'm glad that I got you here today so I can know a little bit more. Yeah, you know? man. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Our Heroes Rock is a project that was uh, started by me, Andreas Hill, and of course, uh, Itor Ewan that you might know as Big E from Friday Night Smackdown. Um, yeah, it's exactly like you said. We, I'll just talk about, just speaking from my personal experience, like you and I talked before the show about like being of mixed heritage and, and I'm the same way. And, you know, I, I went to like a, a private school when I was growing up and, you know, you got a very specific take on history (laughs) a school like Mm -hmm. that and then when i got to high school i transferred to a a public school and like finally i was with this like uh, a very mixed population and it kind of opened my eyes to like a bunch of culture that i hadn't been previously um i don't know introduced to you know Mm -hmm. um so i learned all the things that you normally learn your mlks your rosa parks and amazing people who did incredible things. So this is not anything against them at all, but it's like what you're saying, there are, that's the tip of the iceberg. There are a ton of, of heroes and people of note from uh, American history. We're calling it American history because it's not just black history that you just don't hear about that. I don't hear about like, man, this project for me is as much a learning process as it is for, I hope the people that get to see it when it's eventually made. Um, because I went into it knowing very little. And then when I got tasked with having to help develop this project, um, you know, I'm, I'm the king of research. So I just, <laughs> I just dove in and I had to start learning stuff. Um, I guess I'll start at the beginning because just to, to give people a little bit of a background if they haven't heard it already. Um, I don't know if anybody saw, did you get to see when New Day had their civil rights gear on? Were you aware yeah. of that? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So that's kind of how this all started. Like, so we had, um, like 17 different, uh, I would say figures. I'm trying mm-hmm. not to say characters because they're real yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, figures from black history uh, all over their gear and all over their uniforms. And uh, I had to design those. And in order to do that, I had to do research about them. I had to learn about them because if they're gonna be holding a certain proper in a certain pose, like I wanna tell a little bit of that story. So I had to learn. And man, I tell you, I felt like where has all this been? Mm -hmm. These are incredible people. Um, And so the more we talked about it, the more we realized like there is, there's a hole in our knowledge here. And it started when we were really young. Like we don't learn about those people. And um, what's the best way to try to, to, to fill that niche. And, you know, we're all nerds, you know, we're all dorks and we love uh, cartoons. We love anime and comics. And uh, I mean, myself, I'm a, big cartoon guy growing up. So when we came across the idea to like, you know, let's make a cartoon, let's make it for kids. Let's infuse hip hop and sci-fi and all the things that we love because history can be a little dry. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Like who wants to sit down and learn about history when you're a kid, you just, you're not interested in what's come before you're interested in now. And you're only to some degree, you're interested in the future, but really it's kind of like kids are the ultimate uh, representation of, of, of living in the moment. Um, and that's why they make all the mistakes they do. They're not learning from the past. So we thought like, 
what can we do to to juice this up to make it exciting? So like we introduced uh, holograms and VR and robots and and everything that we love about just regular cartoons growing up, and we're applying it to Black history. And I think the end result is a product that um, like I would watch for fun as a kid. And that's kind of the goal. We want to right. educate people without knowing they're being educated. And I think that's one of the things that um, I love about the project itself is it's like, it's an attention grabber to like, you know, like younger minds, like for an older, you know, adult, we can sit down and we can watch it. But for like a younger mind, you have to like, so you have to capture them like the first couple of seconds and really get to like get their attention. So to have like something like, you know, like music or like, um, you know, animation, you know, that's something that's going to, uh, you know, grab their attention very quickly where they're going to say like, oh, okay, it's not um, something that I'm learning. It's just something that's entertaining me, you know, at that moment, um, you know, and as you went back to saying about the gear that you designed, which uh, side note, um, you know, Big E's gear, I own that gear. So that's what made me want to, um, you know, look into it more. When I, when I saw the design the first time I said, oh man, this is so cool. And then when I actually got to own the, the actual piece and I and I saw everything together, I was just like, okay, wait a minute. I need to know a little bit more about these people who are in this because, you know, like this is something that's very interesting. So it was it was really good to see that you put the research in and you know, it makes other people, it's a definitely a, a conversational piece to you know, for, for people to be like, okay, like who's this? All right, let me find out who this is. And then you wanna like circle back and you know, check out each each person and know like what exactly did they put into uh, like our history. That's exactly the thought process behind it, man. I'm glad to hear it's working. <laughs> <laughs> what you're blowing my mind though. I, I'm sure you must have told me this already, and I I, I apologize if it's uh -huh. on my mind. But uh, so, what piece do you own? What do you have? Okay, so the piece that you designed, the original one that um, that the New Day came out with, with all the different. Um, you know, people, and it says like our heroes rocks. Like in the, it says New Day rocks. Yeah, um, I you own. Have that? Yeah, yeah, I have that. So I own Biggie's ring gear for that one. Oh, yeah. so this so is awesome. Yeah. So like that's how like when I messaged you the first time, and I was that's just right. like, I said I love your work. I was like, I own Biggie's um, ring gear because like Biggie for some strange reason, you know, you might know. I I don't know. I always like question it. I was like, why does he always sell his stuff? And like this and so, guy. So it's like a. <laughs> So it's like a running joke with between my friends, you know, because they know I'm a big New Day fan. I own practically every single piece of New Day stuff. Um, it's awesome. So you know, when it comes when like he like debuts something, the the first thing they go and say, "Oh, Kenny's gonna end up owning this soon." Like, watch, he's gonna be in this closet, <laughs> and it just and I laugh because like, no, like I already have like two pieces of like Big E stuff, and like I have one from like Kofi. The only person I'm missing is like Xavier Woods. Like, like that's like the only one I'm missing. That so, tracks. That tracks yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, first of all, <laughs> let me just say um, how cool this is for me because I think it, it. I think only one other time have I ever been in contact with somebody who buys the stuff online. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it's a really neat feeling because um, I'm kind of the beginning of it, and you're the end of it. You know, right? Like, I I draw it and bring it into like existence. And then I pass it to uh, Robert Adams at main event gear. And then they actually create it and bring it into real life. Right. And then the guys wear it and perform it and show it in front of the world. And then E because he's E the next day will sell it. And then it ends uh -huh. up with you. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's so funny because I like when I, um I purchased, I think it was the gear that he had. Okay. So it was right after last year's WrestleMania yeah. where he, performed on SmackDown and they became the eight time tag team champs. Right. Yeah. So that ring gear, I know you designed as well. So then I was just like, he, he put it up for sale and he put it up for sale. And I was like, all right, I bid on it. I was like, I'm probably not going to win this, like whatever. And then I ended up winning it. So I was like, all right, cool. So then that came in. So I looked at him like, all right, cool. And then I think it was maybe like a couple of months later, then you that's when the uh, um, new day rock stuff came out and I was just like, oh, okay. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And he had it for like a good while. And then all of a sudden, like I saved it as like a save and it pops up and I was just like, oh, like, you gotta be kidding me. So I, I bit on that too. And I was like, all right. And I know, so it's like a little like running joke. Cause I've talked to Biggie and I've told him, I was like, do you have anything else? And he was like, no, I normally just get rid of everything. <laughs> I was like, bro, you have to tell them once. I was like, you have to keep something like, 
no. something to like, to, like when no. you have kids to be like, hey, like this is my stuff. And he was like, no, nah, no, just, just this is what I tell him. Like I, I mess with him all the time about it because I don't understand this mentality. I'm a different, I'm, I'm a different breed. I'm like this mm. sh much short of a being a hoarder. So like I, <laughs> I keep stuff, I keep more stuff than I should. So I, that's how we're opposite. But like, yeah, man, we mess with him all the time about like, you know, <laughs> he gets something, he shows it off like, and just sells it immediately. And I'm like, man, do you not attach any emotional value oh. to this at all? And he's like, ah, not really. <laughs> and I was like, well, it means a lot to me. So, right. you know, I'd appreciate it if you don't just like throw it out the next day. By that. Doesn't matter like, to him. Like, let's take a picture. <laughs> yeah. But now Woods, um, you know, he's a collector. Yeah. You know, so I haven't spoken to him specifically about the gear. I know that he has stuff and he collects stuff yeah. like he's 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 one of us in that way. I would not be surprised if he's kept some of the gear as souvenirs, especially since yeah. he's got kids. And I bet they'd like to see this mm -hmm. at some point, And maybe it means something to them. Uh, yeah, I'm betting he's waiting for one of his kids to get big enough that he could put a jacket on him and take some pictures. Uh, I, I oh, can yeah. see that happening. Yeah, because they they um they, I know they auctioned off the the ring gift from the Rumble for uh, for charity. Oh yes, yeah. right. Yeah. So I I own the Kofi, um, like the uh, the pants. Dude, you have yeah. so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, was, <laughs> what was the first piece that you had uh, from E before the civil rights stuff? Um, it was just the I guess it was the color by numbers. <gasps> you have that? Had, yeah. So oh. I I own that from E, um, and then the um, New Day Rocks one, and then from that one, I would say it was. Next is the Kofi pants from no. uh, from Rumble, okay. and then that and then that's it. Because other than that, I don't have anything from like Xavier Woods as far as like gear, you know. Because he's hard to like yeah. track down when it comes to that stuff. So I've only ever seen one piece of gear from him that I designed, and I believe I've designed all of his stuff. I think, um, and it was from pre New Day. Do you remember when he first debuted and he was uh, partners with Our Truth? Do you yes. That? Uh -huh. Yeah, I've Afro seen that. Mustache. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he had a jacket that was like real spangled out with like black and silver stripes. Yep. That's the only thing I've ever seen of his online anywhere. I think that sold a hundred years ago, but that's the yeah. only thing I've ever seen of his. <laughs> oh man, so that's nuts. So what? So all right. So we, <laughs> we're gonna track back down to uh, to uh, our heroes rock. So yeah. When when it comes to this project, so like for people who don't know uh too much about this like so what can we expect like when we go into this like this new experience of learning absolutely man so um we are just so people know we we crowdfunded uh the project to get a budget for it mm -hmm. and we we're basically going to we didn't honestly we didn't know what to expect going in um you know uh it's it's a good subject and i know we have good artwork and you know we had some good loudspeakers so there's a chance that a lot of people might see it but you know you you can't make people back it you know so we didn't right. know what to expect so we kind of figured that we'll base the project on what kind of money we're able to raise like if we're only able to raise a little bit we'll make a short thing if we raise a lot we can make a longer thing um but one of the things that's really important to me is the look of it um obviously being a, a visual artist uh, that's important to me, but also just being a um, consumer of pop culture and animation. I don't know if you had this impression growing up, but did you ever notice or get the feeling as a kid sometimes that whenever they put out, I'm not saying that there were never any cartoons with uh, featuring people of color. That's not true. They did. Mm. Um, but when it was like starring mainly people of color or uh, a project that was uh, made for that audience. Did you ever feel like they kind of skimped out on the budget or the animation a little bit? Uh huh. It was just like they just gave you like this tiny bit and was like, okay, work what you can and uh, hope for the best. And then that was pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Like I always felt like, uh, like, okay, look, I like Static Shock as much as the next guy. But if you look at the, the Static Shock work, and you compare it to what was going on at the same time with like Justice League Unlimited and Batman Beyond, 
I mean, there's a difference. Oh, there's yeah. a difference in the two, you know? And I don't know why that is because I feel like if anything, the last 10 years has taught us that there are more uh, nerds of color than ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Or we would have loved this stuff and we would have shown up for it. And I don't feel like the budget was ever put into it. I could be totally wrong. That could be me throwing my baggage on. Yeah. I might be projecting. I don't think I am. So no, trust me, you'll definitely find uh, a handful of people who uh, think just like you and say the same exact thing. Okay. So if that's the case, I feel like any one of us might think, man, if I ever get my own project, mm -hmm. it's going to look good. So I got my own project. So we are, we hired an animation company that is like mwah, top notch. They look, the stuff they make is so good looking and it kind of serves two purposes. One, just to kind of fulfill that thing where it's like, if we're making this for, for an audience that I think has been underserved in that way, let's give them something amazing looking, amazing looking. But it also helps because, man, you know how many shows are out there? Oh, tons, yeah. Tons, tons. Mm -hmm. It's just tons of noise. And um, everything, you know, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but that's what we're forced to do. We're judging shows by their thumbnail. Mm -hmm. So if your show looks good, you're going to have a good thumbnail. And it's like, that will help, I think, get clicks. Anyway, all that to say, when you ask uh, what will people expect, expect it to look gorgeous. Expect it to look beautiful, to make those, to get those, those robots and the hall of heroes that you're in. You'll, you'll want to touch them. You'll want to play with them. <laughs> They're very toyetic, as they say. So there's that. But I think the other thing that people might be excited to experience for the first time is we're trying to map the experience of the characters on screen to you. Mm -hmm. So in the narrative, there are kids, students who are at home, um, just like we are, you know? And of course, remember, this was conceived during quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, so we're imagining this as like the ultimate field trip, right? To a place that you could never normally go. So these kids are getting access to a thing they couldn't have through VR, right? So they put on their VR helmets and they are projected into these robots that they did get to control physically and drive oh. around this hall of heroes, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're watching that, it's like you are experiencing that through their eyes. And then there's another level of reality because once you get there and you meet uh, this, this robotic tour guide, Etor, who takes you through the Hall of Heroes and shows you all these exhibits, then he lights up like a hologram. And that hologram is the story of wow. these these figures. So like our, our, our premiere episode, the one that we funded is about Ruby Bridges. So when we get to the Ruby Bridges exhibit, it's like you a, a beat kicks in, it's a song and it envelops you and you're inside this hologram and you're watching a music video all around you telling the story of Ruby Bridges. So we're trying to make it feel as immersive and immediate as possible. Plus you mentioned um, talking about music and, and hip hop, like it's really important to us to have like that thing in your ear that you mm -hmm. that beat you can't get out of your head because oh, I mean, yeah. that's you're right. That's why you go watch yeah. Disney musicals over and over. It's like there's a uh -huh. song in your head you can't stop. So, so like that, when, that, when, yeah. Yeah. When when my kids like you can definitely tell like um you know them doing like remote learning for the for the year uh you know you constantly have to keep telling them because they'll sit there and hum a song in their head while the teacher is like teaching something, I'm like, hey, 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 pay attention. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is not what she's talking about right now. I had just I had to do that today with my with, with one of my younger kids. How old? Because he, he's uh five. Oh, so, perfect, perfect. Yeah, Kindergarten, I had right? to, yeah, I, yeah. So perfect. I had to tell him he's like singing a song, and I'm like, is that what she's um what she's talking about right now? He's like, he just looks at me, and goes, no. <laughs> but so you know, Let to get just that, take a moment, by the way, and and shoot some love to your your kid's teacher teaching kindergarten remote. That's insane. Oh my God. I, you know what? I've it's been with, I, I'm with them every single day throughout um, this whole, you know, pandemic stuff with the remote learning. Yeah. And when it comes to like parent teaching night, you know, I, I, I would tell them like, listen, God bless you because to deal with, you know, 19 small little kids all, you know, remotely, is is a pain in the ass like <laughs> you know <laughs> you know and i and i have two so my i have one that's five and one that's nine. Oh, so excellent. The, yeah so the nine-year-old you know their class is just a little bit you know more structured he knows like he has to sit there and pay attention 
But the little one is just like, this is boring. Like he literally like just walk off and I'm like, have to sit down with him. So now I'm there for like six hours or whatever hours it is that they have these kids sitting there and I'm sitting there with him and I'm just like, oh my God. Like, and, and then you got to work at night, I would guess. Uh-huh, yeah, all exactly. Yes. You can't get anything done. <laughs> oh but yeah, God. so I guess, I guess <laughs> in a really sad analogy, uh, we hope to be that song that distracts kids from school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing because I mean it, it's an attention grabber as it is already because I've showed it to my <laughs> kids and show them like the you know like the different images and they're like oh this is cool especially they're more into like um, animation than anything else so you oh, know cool. it's, it's definitely I can't wait to show them the rest you know once it comes out and then obviously I'll you know I'll say, shoot you a message like hey this is what they think so at oh, least you know please do. Please do. How, what do they think right now? How they like the character designs? Um, they they love the robot, so they're trying to figure out more, and then they're wondering like, are, like, are they gonna be like made into toys? You know. So that's what, I was that's like, kids yeah. know. yeah. So that's like the one thing they always ask, like, is can can we buy this? And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's not out yet. So you know, <laughs> that's cool, man. That that really helps. That that, that kind of warms my heart in a way because. You know how it is. Like when you become an adult, you just want to give kids the stuff that you always wanted. You know. Oh yeah. So hearing that your kids are like, "Hey, this is cool. I'd like a toy of this," makes me feel mm-hmm. like, "Oh, okay, we're on the right track. Mission exactly. accomplished." It's a, it's attractive to them at least. You know. Yeah. So when can we expect for this to like um like to come out that we can actually see the first episode? Not soon, unfortunately. It um, mm-hmm. it takes a while. So we're in the writing stage right now. Like I said, we had to let, just because we just didn't know how much interest there would be. Uh, it's not like we wrote a script ahead of time. Um, we figured we'd let our budget be our guide. Mm-hmm. So, um, and 3D animation, especially the kind that we're going for is a little expensive. So we're going to really take our time with pre-production, which is like just, writing and storyboarding and making animatics so that like, let's take our time now so that when it's time to hand it over to the 3d artists, Mm -hmm. they don't, they, they know what to do. They have a roadmap. We don't have to do as many revisions like expensive retakes or anything like that. So I'm told to expect between what I think five and six months, uh, production time. So definitely not this year. We're hoping, man, wouldn't it be great? Fingers crossed if we could have it out by next February, by next uh, black history month, that would be great year from when we started. That's what I want to do. So, uh, let's aim for that. Let's say that. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good timeline to, to have it, especially, uh, being like the whole message of the project. So to like, to bring it out in February, I think that would be, you know, that'd be great. Even if you get it early, I'll, you know, I know you probably be like, I want to get this out now, you know, just to like, I would probably pinpoint it and say, you know what, February would be like the perfect time to, uh, to get this project on the way. Feels good, right? I mean, we launched it February 22nd, like right at the end. So it would be nice. It would be nice. But yeah, I want to get it out as soon as possible. I just don't want it to be, I don't want it to be rushed or feel rushed. There's this thing, you're a creative guy. So I know that you've made a bunch of projects in the past. I can just Mm -hmm. just guessing. Um, You ever have that feeling where like you, you, you got something done and you're showing it to somebody for the first time and you feel Mm -hmm. that urge to explain yourself before they see it? Yep, like, I, I do it all the time. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Before you say anything, just know that I did this in a weekend, and we didn't have much money. And we didn't have. I don't want to have to preface the project with that because I've done that way too many times in my right. life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think we all do that. Even if we, um, even if we write something, we were like, "Hey, by the way, like it was like two o'clock in the morning when I did this." That's it. Um, <laughs> and I was maybe on like half a cup of coffee, so don't judge me. That's it. That's it. I don't want to have to tell people don't judge me. I want them yeah. to feel free to judge because I feel that the project stands up to judgment. Right. So we we touched base a little bit um, about your your other side of mm-hmm. uh, you know gear um, designing. Mm-hmm. So like for a lot of people who don't know, like how did you get into like designing for like other wrestlers here in WWE? So uh, besides New Day, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's a great question. I don't, I've never thought about that before. I think it's one of those things. I think it's locker room stuff. Um, And, and we're going to have to go into my imagination a little bit for this because I don't have stone cold facts to back this up, (laughs) but I have to, okay, look, right. Everyone's on TV. Everyone's vying for, you know, TV time. 
There's only so many hours a week that people can be on the air, <laughs> right? Yep. And the more you're on, the more impact you need to make in the short amount of time that you're given. And the way that they look and the clothing that they're in is at least half of that before they get to the ring. Like there's just the part where they're walking down the ramp and you have, mm -hmm. what's that? Five seconds, maybe yeah, something like that. Yeah. To get people who are watching you maybe for the first time to think like, Oh, who's this? Oh, what, what's this about? Do I want this action figure? You know? Mm -hmm. So the looks are important. It's like a big part of the character, you know? Um, so I've got to imagine that anyone who's maybe not, super excited about like their current look or they feel like it's getting stale or it's maybe not conveying their new message. Maybe it's older mm -hmm. and it's like, that's how I used to be. I'm, I've improved now, I've leveled up, but I'm still wearing the same stuff. I think that we are very competitive in terms yeah. of the way the new day looks. I think, I think they look great. I really do. Yeah. And um, I can only imagine that if someone is feeling like, oh man, I, I'm not, I don't look the way I feel that they might look at new day and go like, I just got to know who does your stuff, you know, mm -hmm. because everybody that I've gotten has been through recommendation. Like I've never sent out a cold call to anyone asking like, Hey, can I do your gear? Yeah. I'm not above that. I think that's a great way to go, <laughs> but I kind of had my hands full with the, the people that I have. And just every once in a while, I'll get uh, a call up from someone saying like, Hey, I love what you've done with new day. I have this idea. I was wondering if you're the guy to execute it. And I always give it my best. Right. Yeah, because we've seen um, your work for a lot of people who don't know that you came up with the new gear for Apollo. So, you know, when we, when we saw, obviously, you know, Apollo has a new gimmick going on right now. So to have his his new gear, like, match that attitude is, is great. And then when I saw it, I was like, when I saw the gear, I was like, oh, this is great. And then you posted that you did it. And I was like, of course, like, <laughs> it, had, it had to be you. Oh man, that makes me feel good. Thank you. Thank I you. will say, uh, I love Apollo's new look. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, again, you'll never hear me not give props to Robert Adams and his crew at Main Event Gear because, again, the stuff that I do it looks good on screen. That doesn't mean anything until someone actually mm -hmm. sews it and tries to make it. And the materials that that crew picks are just top notch. Oh, like yeah. when they know when to make something matte and when to make it reflective. And when like this shade needs to be adjusted to go with this shade, they're the best. So I think just all together, we're like a really good team and Apollo stuff, man, I could not be more pleased with the way it looks. Um, when, when I first learned of the new angle, um, I got excited because I've really been into um, this, this kind of, aesthetic movement uh, called Afrofuturism, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, kind of blends the aesthetics of like traditional African lore and, and patterns and materials with a very futuristic aesthetic, exactly like the name might <laughs> denote. So, um, and I didn't want to go straight Black Panther because that's been kind of a, that wells a little, a little tapped mm -hmm. out right now, I'd say. Um, so I was, I dove into a lot of like Nigerian, like folklore and materials. And I looked at a lot of like arts and crafts and clothing that come from Nigeria. And um, I tried to pull what I liked out of that. And I always go in a, a heroic way because I grew up reading comics. That's like my, I love comics. So I want everyone to feel like superheroes. So I'm like, what would a Nigerian superhero look like in a hundred years, <laughs> so right. like I don't know modern, if I, modern day now. Exactly. So I don't know if I nailed it, but like when I see him up there, he it looks amazing. He fills it out perfectly, mm -hmm. and he's nailed the character. So I I think overall the Apollo Crews package is a success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it definitely is because like you've seen it, especially like when I saw the gear, I was just like, wow, like okay, he he fits the the trunks. He's going a little more, you know, long pants and. You know, it fits the character that he's trying to uh, that he's portraying right now. You know, I, I mean, I got to tell you, I was really like I'll work with any material, like any pieces. Mm -hmm. But the trunks are by far the most challenging because there's just so little canvas. Right. <laughs> you know, how much story can you tell on like this? I don't even know how big, like just a very small amount of material. Um, by contrast, uh, Big E's coat is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
because it's just yes. a humongous piece of material mm-hmm. that you can do whatever you want on. So I was uh, I was excited. I'm always excited when a guy wants to go from trunks to tights. It's always you know, I'm like, oh, I can do more stuff. Um, but we've done cool things without it too. Like mm-hmm. um, when I first got, um, do you know I do ricochet? Yeah, I was just gonna get into that because okay, you talk about going from like trunks to tights, <laughs> and I was like, well, what about going from like tights to trunks? Because you did um, ricochet's gear. Yeah. And I was like, Ricochet just changed everything. He just before he was just the uh, the the jacket with the hoodie and yeah. like the long tights and like then he switched it to like the vest mm-hmm. and the uh, trunks. So how yeah. did that come about? Well, I will admit that I was disappointed when I found that out because uh he and I started talking and um and I was I was really excited. Like I I have like kind of a a little wish list in the back of my head of like people that like, man, if I could get a hold of them, I, I, I would love to do some stuff for them, you know? And Ricochet was like toward the top of the list, you know, because his whole thing was like superhero. Mm-hmm. And I was yeah, like, oh, he's very God. Toyotic. He is. And like, and th- the way he moves and his look is solid. Like he's just a great performer. And honestly, there was nothing wrong with his gear beforehand. So it was, that's one of the reasons I never felt like I needed uh-huh. to reach out to him I'm like he doesn't need me he's, he's doing like like oscar like she's fine mm-hmm. she, was, she doesn't need me she's <laughs> amazing so um so yeah so he he reached out and we we started talking and um when it was time for me to start designing he was like by the way uh i'm dropping the superhero gimmick and i'm going to trunks and i was like oh that's a lot of blows <laughs> <laughs> i know you probably was trying to talk him out of it like you know i could do a lot with trunk with uh with, with tights right <laughs> yeah well you know um it's it's their it's their look it's their thing you know right. so i'm just here to service their vision so he wanted to go to trunks i think he felt more comfortable you know he does a lot of moves you know oh, and yeah. i can i can imagine like if if you feel a little bit hampered you know you're not going to mm-hmm. do your best so but man i think we killed it on the trunks like we came up oh, with yeah. some really cool designs i gave him a, a ton of concepts i think they're all good um and he picked one and i don't even know i never got to see him debut it it was like a, a red and white a uh, bit with like a lot of spikes and like very, uh, very aerodynamic I, feel. Yeah. I think he did once because he came out with a with with red gear. Yeah, that but, was not so long ago. But then, immediately he had me do a black and white version, like um, like immediately. So and that one I saw a lot of. So okay. I don't know if the red and black. I don't think I've ever seen it. It may exist. I don't know. Um, and then he had, and then we added the vest in that's very mm-hmm. uh, Naruto uh, inspired, yes. you know? So, and that one came out really great too. And that was a really good look for him. And here's your scoop. Uh, we're working on something now and we may or may not be going back to tights. Oh, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> oh, hopefully, hopefully we get the tights back. I mean, I, I loved him with the tights. Sure. Um, this new look that he has now is, is, is incredible too. But uh, I guess a, a lot of people, especially like, uh, younger kids, you know, they're like, what happened to his old gear? And I was just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> You can't really explain it unless he explains it himself. Look, man, here's the thing. I'm not ripped like these guys. Mm-hmm. If I was, if I was shredded <laughs> like these dudes, I might not wear anything around the house either. I might just like, be like, <laughs> hey, look what I made. Look, like, look I, I worked hard for this. Like. Exactly. So I am not, I am not throwing shade against anybody who's like, I'm going to wear trunks and show off what I built on leg day. That's fantastic. You do it. <laughs> it just makes it harder for me to draw on you. Yeah. So, man, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap this up here. Thank you uh, for coming on the show and just like sharing um, this project with us. And, you know, I definitely looking forward to, to more and, you know, thanks for the story. So for people who wanted to contact you or to see more of your work, where can they find you? Oh, thanks, brother, man. I am almost exclusively on Instagram now just because I have never understood Twitter. No, I'm sure I'm it's the, great. I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same way. Don't worry. <laughs> OK, well, there you go. Well, I'm at Davipo on Twitter. That's D-A-V-E-N-P-O-E. Uh, and you can hit me up there anytime, day or night. Uh, I've also got a link there for a commissions page. If you happen to be a wrestler, I do indies too. I do a lot of indie guys and gals now. So, um, you know, hit me up. It's fun. Oh, great. So, guys. Make something cool together. Yeah, exactly. So, like I said, thank you for dropping in. And, uh, you know, hopefully you enjoy what uh, we'll be we bring here here on the, uh, the Call of Podcast. And uh, I'll be talking to you. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. This was it was a blast, dude. This was fun.